Hi, everybody. I'm Casey Griffiths. Um, I'm friends with Mark, my teach religion for a living. And uh, he asked me to talk a little bit about um, Come Follow Me, some of the things that I do in my family, and some of the resources that I use uh, when I teach Come Follow Me. So I've been teaching religion since 2002, about 17 years. And in the course of that, I taught Old Testament, New Testament, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants in Church History. Now I teach church history and family classes for a living. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, how to teach the New Testament, especially uh, the fact that a lot of my friends have been kind of saying it was easy to teach the um, Gospels. There's a storyline there. Uh, there's stories that you can sort of attach to and teach with little kids. In my family, uh, the kids range from age 17 to age 1, and we kind of have to capture all their attention. And so here's a couple things that you should know. First of all, the Pauline epistles are a little bit different. Um, there's no storyline, especially after you get done with the book of Acts. And they're arranged, not even chronologically, they're generally arranged by length. So the Come Follow Me that we're going to study next week, which is First and Second Thessalonians, is actually the first thing that Paul wrote uh, when he started his epistles. It might even be the oldest part of the New Testament because the four Gospels were generally written after Paul wrote Thessalonians. And so in some senses, it can be really helpful to know that the epistles come in a specific order and Paul is dealing with specific things. When he gets to the later epistles, like uh, Second Timothy, he's kind of accepted his fate, given up on some of the damage that's happened to the church, and dealt with it. In the early epistles, like First and Second Thessalonians, Paul's really optimistic about how the church is going to do. And the biggest problem that the church is facing at this time is people are overly excited about Jesus returning to the earth. In later epistles, Paul's dealing with major apostasy, and he has to emphasize scriptures and foundational teachings to try and save people. But in First and Second Thessalonians, and to a lesser extent in Colossians and Philippians, he's talking to a group of people that are doing great. In fact, in Philippians and Colossians, it's a lot like Alma talking to the people in the city Gideon. These are people that are doing what they're supposed to do and keeping the commandments the way that they're supposed to. And so Paul emphasizes some really special doctrines about Christ without reproving their behavior a lot. Now, before you introduce these epistles to your family, it's really valuable to get some context. And so uh, the the lessons that are found in the Come, Follow Me manual are really good. They generally only give about a paragraph of context. I know the people that write those. I used to work with some of those people when I was a curriculum writer for seminaries and institutes. And they study things out, but they also have to keep things relatively brief because it has to go through translation and be sent out in 20 different languages to the church across the world. So... If you're struggling with Paul and you want to make the epistles come alive, let me suggest a couple of resources, first of all, uh, that I use. And I'm not getting paid by any of these people. These are just books that I love and that I use on a regular basis. The first one is called Understanding Paul. This is a book by uh, Richard Lloyd Anderson. He's a great gospel scholar, passed away. He's kind of famous for doing church history things, but he was sort of a jack of all trades. Uh, Understanding Paul is a great uh, short book that gives you crucial background on what's happening in each one of the areas. So it helps to understand that, uh, for instance, Corinth was kind of the Las Vegas of the Roman Empire. And that's why Paul spends so much time reproving people there. Or to understand who Timothy is and what his relationship is to Paul, which is some of the epistles that were going to come up. Even a really straightforward epistle like Philemon is interesting if you understand the way that slavery and servitude worked within the Roman Empire. And a book like that provides context. Another book that's been really helpful to me in my study of the New Testament this time around is brand new. So the first one's an old book. This is a newer book. Uh, this is by uh, Tom Waymond, and he did his own translation of the New Testament. The translation's pretty good. I still favor King James language, but Tom also used the most up-to-date things uh, to provide commentary each one of the books. So part of the reason why I like this book is because the uh, footnotes are just crackerjack. They're very, very good. 
And uh, Tom did a good job contextualizing everything. And then he really went out of his way uh, to show where a passage has similarities to things in the New Testament or the Book of Mormon, because we're assuming they all have the same author. Now, the next thing to keep in mind is that the church has a ton of resources that are out there. There's Come Follow Me websites and uh, a podcast that they do on the Mormon channel. Um, I myself uh, do a, a, a PowerPoint every week. Um, I teach uh, college classes, and so in those classes, it's always helpful to have pictures up on the screen. And that works for students that are 24-year-olds or for students that are one years old. Uh, so every week I put that out, it'll be published on the Come Follow Me website, and it comes in keynote format, which is the format I created in, and in PowerPoint format, and also in Google Slides, and then I put in a PDF. And usually there's a link to a couple videos that will help you um, engage your people and put them in there, because not only do I have children that range from 17 to 1, but one of them's autistic, and he has a really difficult time focusing. And so he generally uh, will kind of be off in left field and then focus in when we watch a video. And there were a ton of great videos with uh, the four Gospels. There's going to be a ton of great videos when we start Book of Mormon next year. I'm especially excited for that. But right now with Paul, there's not a lot of videos other than one or two that they prepared, which are generally Paul just reading the text over a few images. However, over the course of... Um, church history, especially last 30 years, there's been a ton of good media prepared, and most of it's available on the church website where they're trying to put everything, or you can find it on YouTube, and I usually link to one or two of those videos that will help you teach principles that are within uh, the epistles that we're studying. So, uh, in, in summary, a couple things, okay? First of all, use the curriculum. The people that write the curriculum are excellent, and they're very, very diligent, and the curriculum that they review uh, goes through correlation, which means that someone higher up the chain, someone that has an ecclesiastical office has reviewed it. They do a really good job, and after I've read the epistles themselves one or two times, I usually go to the curriculum and scan through it. The next thing is to find a commentary that you feel good about, uh, something like the New Testament, Tom Wayman's translation, or Understanding Paul, which is really useful in and of itself, too. And then if you need additional help or you're running out of time, some of those resources that I'm putting up can be really, really useful and helpful to you as well in helping your family go through this. And the pattern that my wife and I use is because I'm usually at the church for meetings, she'll come home, she'll have everybody read through the passage together. I'll have read through it during the week. She'll have everybody prepare one principle based on the curriculum. And then we sit down together at night. We have our family prayer. We have our family hymn. We have a family planning meeting, and then we do Come Follow Me for about 30 minutes, where each person gives a presentation, and then my wife and I will kind of take control over the overall lesson and guide people through uh, some of the material that we prepared. We usually end up by watching a video and then having a discussion about it, and then we have treats, because that's the number one way to get everybody engaged, just promise them caramel popcorn or ice cream or something like that. I want to emphasize this has been a huge blessing to my family. I'm really grateful President Nelson made these changes. We've even had days when we've had to travel to a birthday party and we've done Come Follow Me while we were in the van. That's easy enough to do, especially if you have a phone with an internet connection. You can still access the videos or the PowerPoints or all the resources that we're putting up. So I hope that that's helpful. And if I can give anybody any hints or tips along the way, uh, just contact me or let me know. I'm happy to uh, be your friend on Facebook and answer any questions that you have about the curriculum. We had a great discussion a couple weeks ago about Paul's relationship to women based on some of the things that were taught in uh, Corinthians. And that's a lot more nuanced and there's a lot more things like that that are when it comes to the scriptures. Especially when we get to the book of Revelations, I hope that you'll use us as a resource to try and understand some of those things that are more complicated and complex and help you unlock this book of scripture. Because what we really want at the university that I teach at is scripturally literate students that already come knowing the scriptures well so that we can take them and raise the next level. So thanks very much, and I hope you have a great week studying, and I'm always here to help as a resource if you need someone to help. Thanks. Bye-bye.